Hello, Kemi Hint, and welcome back to another Boruto review. And we're still recovering from last week's episode where just about everybody and their mama that watch anime tuned in to watch that one episode of Boruto. Even if they haven't seen Boruto at all, they tuned in, they watched the Momoshiki fight versus Naruto and Sasuke, and, you know, it was something that blew people's minds away. Uh, the only thing I could say is that the staff that worked on the episode must have been so happy and so satisfied seeing the positive feedback. Um, one of my friends actually showed me a screenshot of, like, Boruto trending on his timeline. Like, he could actually see it was trending where he's from. It's a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feeling. Uh, Boruto's not, like, my favorite anime. I love it. I think it's a great anime. I just think that even though it's not my favorite anime, I could kind of feel... I feel very happy when I see that kind of positive feedback in the community. It's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, this week's episode, let's talk about it. Uh, basically, it died down. Everything died down. You see Naruto, the Kage, and Boruto, along with Sasuke, obviously, coming in. Everybody's waiting for them on top of the Hokage's office. Uh, you know, everybody being kind of like the main characters that you care about. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're wa basically waiting there. They see them all come back. And everything goes back to normal, right? Everything's chilling. Uh, Boruto obviously feels guilty about cheating, and he goes and apologizes to everybody that he can. Uh, he apologizes to Shinki Squad, and he apologizes to Chikadai. That was pretty cool because it's something that allowed him to kind of mature and see things very differently. As opposed to seeing it like, hey, I cheated because of X, Y, and C, or giving an excuse or a reason for why he did it. He didn't do that. He just said, hey, I apologize. I know what I did was that was not the right thing to do. And, you know, it shows maturity within Boruto. And that's something that, you know, you haven't really seen from him. So it's actually kind of something that adds to the character. It fleshes him out just a little bit. Uh, his relationship with Naruto took a very different kind of approach. You could definitely tell that Boruto sees Naruto in a different light. Simply because of what he had to go through with the Momoshiki arc. He kind of got a glimpse of, okay, you know. Maybe maybe I'm the one that had been seeing this wrong. And and I don't think that Boruto was in the wrong the whole time. I think he was wrong in certain aspects of his relationship with Naruto. But at the end of the day, you know, Boruto is just a kid who didn't really have the feeling of or, or the joy of experiencing like a lot of happy moments with his dad. Like when you think about it, his dad is always working, always busy. And even at the most important times, it's not there to celebrate. So he kind of felt like, hey, you know, this, this is a missing part of my family, which he's right across my house. But, you know, I'm not able to even share like a happy moment, like my my kid sister's birthday with him. And, you know, he gets mad. He directed that anger at Naruto. And that's why the, that relationship was kind of rocky. But now you can definitely tell it took a different direction. And I love seeing that, you know, because we all grew up with Naruto. We all love Naruto. Like if... If anything, if we had to choose between Boruto and Naruto, you'd probably pick Naruto, right? Because you've seen this man through his journey since he was a kid to all the way to now that he's an adult in the Hokage. So as the audience of Naruto, you kind of communicate and connect more with Naruto than Boruto, right? So, you know, it's a cool feeling seeing the main character of Boruto, which is Boruto, treat the character that you really grew up with and love, treating him right. You know, it's a good feeling. Uh, but, you know, the episode itself was kind of like chill. It wasn't really anything crazy. Uh, we did find out that, okay, now he has this little thing on his hand. And we're going to find out what it is later down the line. Uh, Sasuke is about to leave the village again, which is kind of sad, you know. By the way, here's one thing that I want to tell you guys. that uh, it, it came over my head really quickly. Even though I know it's not true. It came over my head really quickly. Just So peep this. When Sarada grabbed Sasuke... Right by the hand, it's like, hey, hey, you know, Papa, come on, let's go and, and like spend the last day. You're gonna stay here in the village with me, and I was like, okay, Sasuke looked genuinely happy, right? And I'm like, wait, are we, are we in the infinite Sukiyomi? Because I don't know, man. I would have never expected to see Sasuke with his own family interacting with them like that and actually like smiling and looking happy, you know? That's something that you would legit think is an infinite Tsukiyomi. Obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not like trying to entertain the idea that they're in the infinite Tsukiyomi. I'm just saying like, sometimes when you see characters that normally would have not been in that position, 
back in the day when you were watching Shippuden, you're like, okay, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, there's a maybe there's a one percent chance that might be the case, and it might be Ninsen Sukiyomi still. But now, nah, man, I just I just joke around. Uh, it, it it was like pretty cool, man. I'm not gonna lie, like that moment when, with Sada and Sasuke, that like really warmed my heart, man, because. Just seeing Sasuke actually have happiness in his life, it makes me feel happy, man. And I know it's just an anime character, but, you know, you've been following this character since you were a little kid. And it's just a cool thing to see, like, unfold. Uh, but this episode was actually just enjoyable. It was chill. Nothing too crazy. And, of course, this is where we stop the Moshiki arc, right? It officially ends with this episode. And we start the story of Boruto, which is what he said at the very end of the episode. He said, I'm not trying to be the Hokage. That was my dad's story. My story starts here. And I like that. I like that attitude, you know, because it's communicating to everybody else that might still think that this is a Naruto show, which technically it is, right? It's in the same universe, but it's not about Naruto anymore. Naruto already accomplished what he had to accomplish. He's going to be showing up later down the line, of course, but this is not about him. He's basically the side character he's a supporting character within the show he's not a main character uh that would be boruto sarada etc right but anyways next week we're gonna be getting into what i call the the chocho fillers some of you guys might tell me hey berto these are not fillers because kishimoto is involved with these episodes so technically they're canon because kishimoto's working on them i understand the point of view uh, I personally have a certain point of view that I have for fillers, which is if, like, they have their own self-contained story and they don't really break out of that shell and go and move into the main plot, they're not canon to me, all right? Uh, they might actually be canon to some of you guys. That's fine. I just don't see it that way, and I hope people will respect that. Uh, but for these Chocho episodes, I'm still looking forward to them. Just it's a new, different thing until we get back into the continuation of the manga, and it's a cool fucking thing to see the anime just get right in there. Put all the hands right in there into the manga territory. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, now that like everything's kind of getting connected to one another, uh, I'm just waiting for the Boruto universe to expand as much as it can, okay? For those of you guys that may be worried about Killer B, we found out on this episode that he's fine. He returned to the Cloud Village, so everything is Gucci, all right? Don't worry about Killer B. The man is a monster. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video here. If you enjoyed the episode, let me know. I, I understand it wasn't as hype as you guys might have liked it to be. But, you know, you, we can't have action all the time. I felt like this was a very well done episode. It was chill. It was slow. And it kind of just tied, tied up the loose ends. Oh, shit. By the way. By the way. Urashiki at the end. Yo. Urashiki at the end. That shit was hot. I like I like the sinister little tone they put to that shit. And he seems to be the most mysterious guy out of everybody. And I love it. I hope to see more from Murashiki, man. Because so far, man, he's, he's, he's been winning this shit. He's been winning this shit. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm out. Peace.